welcome back. I'm Stephanie Rule. We've got new evidence first reported by NBC News, and it suggests that North Korea is rapidly rebuilding one of its key long-range rocket sites. These new satellite images from the researchers at Beyond Parallel were taken just 48 hours after President Trump's Hanoi summit with Kim Jong-un that abruptly broke down with no deal. The same summit where the president insisted Kim Jong-un vowed there would be no rocket tests. Chairman Kim promised me last night is regardless, he's not going to do testing of rockets and uh, nuclear, not going to do testing. So, you know, I trust him and uh, I take him at his word. I hope that's true. NBC national security reporter Courtney Kuby was part of the team who broke this story. Courtney, amazing reporting. This site, for months, it appeared to be shut down, and President Trump has insisted, Kim Jong-un said, no new rocket testing. So what's going on? That's right. So this site seemed to be dormant since about August of 2018, just uh, weeks after the Singapore summit in June, the very first time that President Trump met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. What our, our, our colleagues, our friends, the, the researchers at Beyond Parallel, which is a, a research uh, project at, from CSIS, which is a defense think tank. These guys do terrific work, tremendous work. They looked at some commercial satellite imagery and determined that, in fact, there has been some new activity at SOHE, which is a satellite launching facility. What's concerning about this, of course, Steph, is that you know, satellite launching a satellite has the same, much of the same basic technology as launching an ICBM, a three-stage intercontinental ballistic missile, something that could be potentially capable of hitting the continental United States. Of course, after this meeting in Hanoi with President Trump and KJU just last week, the president said, as he has many times before, that North Korea is not testing its missiles anymore and that that's a good thing and that the diplomatic process continues to work, Staff. Okay, what's the White House's response been thus far? Because in the past, the president has said one thing and his own intelligence people have said the opposite. That's right. So we heard from his national security advisor, John Bolton, last night, who said that if North Korea doesn't continue to, you know, work towards a denuclearization, towards the, the goals that were, the very vague goals that were set out in Singapore last summer, that they will continue to be hit by these crushing sanctions. And he even threatened that they could, the U.S. could impose new or more sanctions on North Korea. Sarah Sanders, when we first went to the White House with this, uh, this story late yesterday afternoon, Sarah Sanders declined to comment on it because she said it was an intelligence matter. But then just moments ago, one of our colleagues, Kristen Welker, at the White House got her to talk about it a little bit on camera. I think we have that sound. Is North Korea already violating its promise to freeze its nuclear program? Uh, look, we're continuing to have ongoing uh, conversations with North Korea. Um, as the president has said, we'll see what happens. Beyond that, I'm not going to comment one way or another uh, on any potential uh, intelligence. So, of course, once again, she's refusing to talk, declining to talk about anything because of the intelligence behind it. But the White House is leaving open the possibility that the diplomatic conversations will continue uh, between the U.S. and North Korea stuff. All right. In your reporting, you point out that former FBI Director Andrew McCabe, and we realize the position he's in against the president. He's no friend of President Trump. But he has said that President Trump believes Vladimir Putin over his own intelligence officials when it comes to North Korea and their nuclear capabilities. Well, now Vladimir Putin is speaking out about the U.S. decision to leave the Intermediate and Short-Range Missiles Treaty. What exactly is he saying? So we heard from Vladimir Putin just earlier today about this. Of course, the U.S. pulled out of the INF Treaty just last month, claiming that Russia had been in violation of the treaty for months and months. So we heard Vladimir Putin just today talking about it, saying that the decision of the United States to withdraw from the treaty um, on the I from the INF and short-range missiles is a direct step towards undermining the entire system of international security agreements. The United States, of course, as I said, has been has said that, that Russia has been in violation of this this uh, INF treaty for months and that the U.S. was just pulling out because they weren't going to be the only party who was upholding their end of the bargain. Stephanie. My goodness. Thank you. This is really, really important reporting. You can't just believe what you hear. Thank goodness for the free press. Thanks, Courtney. Up next, Thanks. the one investigation that seems to be bothering the president the most is looking at how his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, received his security clearance. Former CIA Director John Brennan will be here on why even the attempt by foreign countries to gain leverage over Kushner should worry absolutely everyone, not just national security officials. Now you see what I was talking about.
in my diplomacy failed video yesterday or last night that I recorded and put out this morning that when you go to pulling the rug out from underneath people for whatever reason, you're upsetting the apple cart, the international apple cart that has been in progress for years and years and years pertaining to bringing stability to the world. And I have a tendency of wondering if our chief and commander by the name of Donald Trump actually can comprehend that, can understand that. Because per every action is a reaction. And I'm not saying that it's Donald Trump's fault, the reason why that they never did get an agreement with North Korea, but the fact of the matter is there's a lot of people right now that are scratching their heads towards which way this is going versus which way that they thought that it was going. That's serious. That's serious diplomacy actions at work that defy our allies versus our enemies. And I hope to God, I pray to God, that somehow or another we can maintain law and order on an international scale at least as well as what we have been because if somebody, whoever, was to be gutsy enough to hold the world at ransom by using this type of tactic, it could put not thousands, not millions, but billions of people's lives at stake. Billions of people's lives at stake. Simply because of an invention that as far as I am concerned never should have been invented to begin with. And I realize the reason why that our ancestors created the atom bomb was because of a maniac by the name of Hitler that basically wanted to engulf or dominate the whole world in his ideology and his theology that he was teaching at that time, I realized that, that he needed to be stopped at all cost. And we done what we needed to do during World War II. Not bragging about it, but the fact of the matter is, if our ancestors didn't do what they done, you and I today would probably be speaking in a completely different language, which would be German, and we would probably be greeting one another by holding up one of our hands and saying, Hi, Hitler. He was a tyrant from the word go. But there's other tyrants out there too as well, um, such as North Korea, um, such as smaller countries that has lots and lots of money, that has lots and lots of power. We are walking off into a era in the 21st century unlike anything that we have could imagine towards what that we have been adapted to in the 20th century. And with all this technology at hand pertaining to our gizmos and our gadgets. It can be an asset just as quickly as it can be a liability. And I hope to God that our leaders here in not only America but throughout the world 
can understand that. That a lot of this hokey pokey uh, backwash whenever it comes to what's being said and who's saying it and why they said it and where they said it at. I just hope to God that a lot of these people can sift through this type of hypocrisy, strain through the difference between the truth and, and the lie, and that somebody won't erratically do something that everybody is going to suffer the consequences on the count of. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, may God be with us all, and may we be led into the path of righteousness versus the path of unrighteousness towards leading us not into temptation, but delivering us from evil. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen.